Uh, my name is Sydney Chang. And my name is Ulf Ashbush. And uh, we're going to do um, a presentation of um, Google mobile products on the iPhone. And um, so some of the things we're featuring are the new integrated Google.com experience. So um, including that our search, Gmail, Calendar, Reader, and more. Um, Ulf, do you want to tell us a little bit about the um, Gmail experience as well? Cool. So we also have a new Gmail experience integrated into Google. And we're going to give you an example of what's different using Gmail on your client in the building client and on the iPhone versus the Google version. And we're going to talk about what's new on Google Maps. A couple of exciting new features there. So we're about 10 minutes away from our presentation and we're excited. So thanks for watching. All right, guys. Thanks. And what we're doing here today is we want to show you an introduction about what's new about Google on your iPhone. So everything today will be kind of under the theme of it's faster, it's sleeker, and it's easier. And we want to show you what we've done. So today at Macworld, we're going to talk about a couple of the new products that you might have heard about yesterday or um, that launched today. One of them is the new integrated Google experience that you've seen at Macworld at the uh, big presentation this morning. The next product, we want to show you a couple of updates on what happened and because of web albums. We have a special version produced for the iPhone that uses a lot of capabilities of um, the iPhone and the Safari web browser. Uh, another product, we want to show you what's new with Google Maps, what is happening on Gmail on your iPhone, and the different ways of using Gmail on your iPhone. We introduced IMAP a couple of weeks ago, and we want to show you now what is different using Gmail on your iPhone when it's integrated into Google. We're going to show you a couple of updates on a special version we just released on iGoogle on the iPhone where everything you've set up on your desktop you can now take with you on the go. And lastly, we're going to give you a tip uh, about Group 4 on 1 and a hidden feature that we haven't talked about so far and what you can do especially on your iPhone and that's different than on other phones. So this is about Google on your iPhone. So we're really excited about the new Google.com on the iPhone. Um, we've taken kind of the best um, that we could do with the Safari browser. And uh, we've made Google.com available on the iPhone in a really fast and fluid way. So to get started, um, you could just simply tap on the Safari icon, um, go to www.google.com, and right there you'll get um, our new uh, integrated experience. So it's basically all the Google applications that um, all our users use on one interface. So you don't have to go to different URLs. It's all right there. We make it really easy to access. Um, obviously, search is kind of our centerpiece. That's what we're known for. So we've um, done uh, a, good, a good job, uh, in, in my mind, of the search. So you can type in Macworld uh, Expo 2008. Um, one of the things that's really hard about the iPhone that our users complain about is typing. So we have something called Google Suggest. So it looks up into the database of Google searches, finds the most common words that you're looking for. So if you just type M-A-C-W, um, we'll have some suggestions for you. And you can click on Macworld 2008 um, immediately. So the first tab will show you the um, web results. So this is the Google web results from the desktop. You can also click over to images and it's loaded immediately. So you can see some images of Google um, of Macworld Expo. Um, we also have something called local because we know on mobile you want to know about what's in your vicinity. So um, we also have something called search memory, so or location memory. So you can actually enter your location, and we'll, and we'll know, um, we'll memorize that location. So when you do your search, um, you can actually find the, um, the terms that are relevant to you, and you can easily make a phone call from that website, as well as click the hyperlink to launch Google Maps. Um, the location is persistent, so as you, you do more and more searches, we know that you're not new, and you will um, continue to do searches there. Um, we also have news results where you can um, browse and peruse through various news items about Apple. Um, so today, um, Steve Jobs in his keynote talked about being able to bookmark a web page, um, and it, it would land directly on your home screen. So, um, so when you bookmark a page now, um, the Google icon will appear on your home screen, and you can look something like this, and then you can tap on Google.com, and it'll launch um, our, our website. 
So that's the new integrated Google.com experience. Um, we're also proud today to talk about iGoogle. Um, one of the responses that we heard is that you know we have a lot of pe people who love iGoogle and they want to experience iGoogle on the iPhone. So um, again, same procedure. Tap on the Safari, Safari icon. Um, go to google.com and right on the home page there's a link to iGoogle and that will launch your full um, desktop iGoogle so you so it's fully synchronized um, you get all your weather your stocks um, your email um, all in one page and one more screenshot um, of news so it's formatted for your iPhone so that's iGoogle on your iPhone I'm going to pass it back to all there are actually two ways now of uh, accessing Gmail on the iPhone one one of them is two ways. One of them is IMAP. So we just launched this a couple of weeks ago, where you get your emails very quickly via IMAP. And the other one is Google.com. The experience that Sydney just described, the new integrated experience, which you all get on one screen. So let me talk about IMAP first. Um, what we can do today now and announce is that it's a very easy setup. All you got to do now is you click on the Gmail icon, and you can log in with your credentials. All the things you need is your login name, your password. You don't have to manually set it up again. And everybody who set it up this way before has been using POP, a POP3 service. You're all going to be transferred to IMAP automatically if you update your firmware to 113. So everybody's going to be transferred on this. If you set up your Gmail account uh, manually before, nothing will change for you. This is just if you set it up the easy way. And what it does is this allows you to actually use the built-in client that Apple generated. The advantage is that you basically can use everything that you want to do with your email. You can send photos right from your camera. And uh, it's very nice because it's in sync with the web. That's a big difference that we have now with IMAP. Everything you do on your iPhone is now synchronized with your Gmail account. So if you send an email from your iPhone, it'll show up in your send mail folder. Um, one thing I want to strike actually also if you delete an email from your iPhone, it's not just deleted from your phone anymore, it's actually going to be gone. It's deleted from your account. So that's um, kind of an important difference to notice. Um, all the labels you set up will show up as folder icons in here, so you get the full experience this way. The second way of accessing Gmail is something that we just put together for you. It's an integrated way of using Gmail in Google.com. So you go to Google.com again, you just click on the Gmail tab, and what you get is the full Gmail experience. And that means that you can now, for example, search all your mail, all six plus gigabytes of it. So I put my personal mail all in my account, 10 years of email. I can now search it wherever I go on my iPhone. Um, the second thing, and a lot of people like this, is uh, Gmail's unique feature, conversation view, where you see different conversations on one screen you can tap from one to another very quickly and easy and you can follow uh, an email conversation with you. Similar to the Google.com search experience that Google suggests, we now have autocomplete also in email. So once you start typing, in this case just a letter T, it will actually find what email is associated with it and what closely matches the search term you put in there. So that's Gmail on the iPhone. So a couple of other products we want to highlight today. Google Calendar is new. We have a couple more products, all integrated into Google.com. So one of them is Google Calendar. You can now access your calendar on the go on your iPhone. And it's a very cool experience where everything is always up in sync and synchronized. So if somebody else accesses your calendar and adds new appointments onto it, they will show up right there on the screen. And what we want to show you today is Month Suite. So we just introduced this very easy overview of uh, you see all your appointments in one month. You can click on every day uh, and you see the appointments. It works very similar to the built-in client on your iPhone. And again, the highlight is it's always in sync. Somebody puts a calendar entry on there, you'll see it on your iPhone, you'd make a change on your iPhone and sync back. So everything that happens is in sync and you really can take it on the go with you. That's what we're doing at Google every day. A couple more updates. You can now check your RSS feeds right in Google Reader. This is one of the first products we launched for the iPhone. We made a couple of updates to it now. So once you set up your email, uh, your RSS feeds rather, uh, you can now inline read them right in your Google experience. And, and I invite you to actually try it out yourself because it's much better to see if you just play with it. It's very fast. You tap on it, it's all preloaded, and it'll show up right there on your screen. A couple of other Google products we integrated into this is Google Docs. So you can now view your documents and spreadsheets uh, right in Google. 
again. And with all these many products that you've seen, uh, you might ask yourself, so how do I actually manage all these together? So now you can actually customize your Google experience. Um, so once you click on the More tab, you'll get all the products that we have now launched on the iPhone. And we're going to you know, launch more products on it, and this screen will change automatically. And you can then customize it as easily as one, two, three. So you click on Change tabs, and you can choose three icons that you want to put in your menu bar. Uh, Gmail, Calendar, and Reader are pre-selected, so you just deselect them add whatever products you want and you have very quick access to all the Google products that you're interested in. So that's Google Calendar and more. One other cool product that we launched just a couple of days ago is uh, a new version of Picasa web models for your iPhone. And again, we have a very sleek new interface here that integrates all your photo albums and you can view your photo albums on the go. It'll actually uh, adapt the screen size properly. It'll fit all your photos to your screen size. And you have uh, kind of as you expected on the iPhone, vertical and horizontal viewing. So once you flip your phone, it'll actually adapt to that. It will recognize it and we'll show you the picture full screen again. The cool thing about that is, again, you're online, so you can search community photos. Millions of community photos. This is a career about Macworld, and you see um, what people have put together on photos over Macworld in the last couple of years. And once you're here, you actually see updates as well. So new pictures that are people uploading, you can see right there on your screen, access them, and enjoy them, show them to your friends. So that's because of web models. Lastly, I want to show you a product that we're really proud of. It's Google Maps, and we just launched a couple of really cool new updates on it. You might have heard it before. Um, we launched a Java version of it, and today we're announcing it for the iPhone as well. So all you're going to do is even easier than search. So you just click on the Maps icon. It's right there. You don't have to download anything. But I just suggest that you upgrade to firmware 113, because then what you get is you can find your location with just one tab. So you click one button, it's not GPS, but it's the next best thing, it's close to it. We use self-tower triangulation, and you can actually find out what your location is uh, in a rough estimate. So we tried it out a couple of times here. Uh, it's around a thousand meters exact. Uh, but that's really cool if you're talking about um, just knowing your estimate of location. There are a lot of uh, opportunities where this comes in handy. And one thing again, which I want to emphasize is the typing on the iPhone that we want to reduce as much as possible. So not you can do now is you just type in one search query, let's say coffee, and it'll actually find all the coffee shops in the area where you are now. You don't have to know what's the area of the city. You don't have to know the street name. Uh, this is particularly interesting if you are traveling. If you're going to New York, you don't know exactly where you are. Is it Midtown? Is it the Upper East Side? You don't know. All you got to do is you type in a query and you get results. You can tap the satellite view. Thank you. <laughs> you can tap the satellite view. You can tap the list view. You see all the uh, coffee shops that are nearby in that way. Still in there, step-by-step -step directions. So if you want to go to Google, to Apple in Cupertino, all you got to do is you can select those and we show you the way. You can actually go from one place to another. It's kind of the next best thing to navigation in that case. And the cool thing about that is that it's, again, you're connected to the web, so you get up-to-date traffic information as well. So luckily here, uh, not much is going on the, on the highway. We're at Apple in 15 minutes. Uh, but it might be different, so then you want to take a different route. Step-by-step -step directions. And then you write on the Apple campus. Again, the cool thing about this, you just swip over to a list view and you see listed directions. Um, it's very handy. You can just follow along, drive along, and get to your location. So that's Google Maps. And actually, let me give you a tip just before I let you go. Um, there's a new product called Google Phone One. And you might have tried that out. It actually works on every phone. But it's a little bit unique on the iPhone. So let me first introduce you what the product does. It's a voice local search. So all you got to do is you call 1-800-Google-411. It's 1-800-4664-411. And uh, it's going to ask you a question. What city and state, please? So you pick any location you want to have information on. Let's say Palo Alto, California. It's going to ask you then what business name or category you're interested in. So let's, let's pick a query. Let's say Cooper Cafe in Palo Alto. Really cool store. And the feature I want to announce is, at that point, you can just say map it. The words map it. And what this actually does is, on your iPhone, it's actually going to send you an SMS right to your iPhone. So what you have here, you have the store name, you have click to call, you can make a reservation, you can make an order right there, you have the address. And the cool thing is you actually have a link on the bottom. This is not going to open a web browser. When you actually click on this link, you see a result right there in Google Maps. 
So you can follow along and go there. So let's recap really quick. That's just three steps for voice supported map. First, call 800 group 411. You get an SMS, open an SMS, and you get right into Google Maps with voice supported search. So that's a quick overview of what we have new on Google on your iPhone. Thanks a lot for coming. We're here for questions if you want to know anything about it. Again, welcome to our booth. We have a demo.